Hi, I'm Daryl Johnson with eCountryLifestyle.com. We're here to do some morel hunting today. I'm he out here to show you a few tricks on finding them, what to look for, areas and stuff. It's around the first week of May. It's just prime time for mushrooms around here. Uh, last week, uh, on Friday, I found 110 little grays, not in this area, another area. Uh, but with a couple days in the 70s, temperatures uh, holding steady around 50 at night, 70 during the day with some rain last night, it's just prime time. So we ought to find some morels here today. Hopefully I'll be able to show you both different varieties. There's the gray, some people call them the browns, uh, but there's the gray variety and then the yellow variety. Yellows tend to be much bigger. Uh, I like the grays to eat because they're much more flavorful. Uh, but the yellows will give you bulk and, and give you a lot in the fridge. So we're going to go out here and find some. One of the first things you want to do is find a good morel stick. So this is this right here is just about perfect. About a three, four foot long section. And this will help you stabilize yourself as you're walking through the woods, but it'll also help you move stuff around to be able to see the mushrooms. Because uh, many times they hide on you, you know. So we have to have to go in uh, underneath the brush and find them. So we're going to take a look at this area. All right, some of the conditions, places you want to look at for mushrooms uh, around the base of dead elms. Some of these trees right here are dead elms. As you can see, the bark falling off of them. Uh, these have actually been dead for a few years. I like to find a tree that's got new, it's just newly dead. And by that, I mean kind of a red fringe on the, on the bark. Uh, but these areas are the prime areas you want to look out for uh, because that's where you'll find a majority of your mushrooms. Now, mushrooms can be found everywhere. I mean, they can be found under uh, mainly hardwood trees, though. Uh, hedge, oak, but elm seems to be the predominant, uh, if you want to call it, your gravy area. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for these dead trees like this. Okay, so let's go into the woods and see if we can't find some morels. I just found a couple, looks like one, two or three here. There may be more, we'll have to look around. Uh, one thing I want to stress is when you first find a mushroom, don't rush into go grabbing it and sticking it in your pack. You know, take your time, because uh, initially I saw just this one mushroom. Had I rushed in and done that, I might have stepped on a couple others. Uh, but. It also gives you a focal point of what to look for. You see the one mushroom and you kind of look around and you can see things that look just like it. All of a sudden it just seems like mushrooms start to appear all over the place. So there's a couple right in here. We'll get a We'll go in here and we'll pick them and we'll go find some more. These are the little gray varieties. Um, so I haven't found the big yellows yet, but hopefully we'll find some of those. Okay. All right. Now when you're picking a mushroom, don't go grabbing the whole base and yanking the whole base out of the moss. Just kind of pinch it off and pick it up. That way you don't damage the fungal growth that's there and you have a good possibility of having more coming up later. If you go and ripping it out, it can damage it and you may end up not having any mushrooms here in the future. It just seems like mushrooms like to grow in the thickest crap there is. But uh, here's another little one here. Also, like I said, I, I saw three when I was coming in. Now that I'm here, I see another one there, a couple more. So Now one thing you got to be careful of too is when you're pinching them, taking the mushroom up, a lot of times this stuff like this growing up right here, that's early stages of poison ivy, which we'll show you some more examples of later a little bit closer up so you can recognize it. But you got to be careful these shoots because you get it on your fingers and you go and rub your eyes and the next thing you know in a couple days your, your eyes are all swollen up, you're itchy, it's poison ivy's a mess. Seems like I don't even have to touch it, I can just be downwind of it and get it. So I have to be extremely careful on that. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. Right now I'm going to go find some more mushrooms. I see a couple more right over here. Like I said, sometimes you got to get down into this stuff before you really start to see them. Okay, now I was just over in this area here is where we found a couple. And what you want to do is you want to kind of circle the area that you found, just kind of make a perimeter around it, expand that perimeter. Uh, many times, like I said, there's more than one mushroom. 
Uh, it may be a few yards in between the next batch, but uh, this area, if you can see it, there's a lot of moss on this ground. Clear away a little bit of the vegetation here. Now this moss, just to show you a little bit of it, holds the moisture real well. And it seems like you have to understand fungus and how it grows. It, it's the spores will go and multiply very rapidly through an area if the conditions are right. Uh, loose soil, water uh, doesn't have to be present, but it does have to be present for the mushroom to pop up. As the spores grow through this moss, they may cover an area, sometimes an entire hillside. Uh, you know, you've heard of people walking up on a hillside and just finding a ton of morels through the whole hillside. That's because the spores have gone through the moss, through the, the ground, networked through, and then there's enough moisture that, boom, up pops a mushroom. Okay, so this again is a real good area with the moss and everything. We just found some over here. Now what you want to do is the elevation, kind of follow the elevation that you, that you found it because something's right in that area, okay? The, the moisture's been right, maybe the sunlight, uh, but I tend to, once I find a mushroom in one area at a certain elevation, I go and I kind of track that elevation, also go around the area, uh, but <laughs> you're going to love this. Check this out. Like I said, we just found them over there. I'm coming around here. I'm looking at about 20, 30 mushrooms here. I mean, and these are some yellows, so we'll be able to show you the difference between grays and yellows. All right, as I told you, when you find the first morel, you see the first morel, don't go jumping in there. Because I'm just, I, I seen, I saw one here, and I'm sitting there going, scanning, and I'm going, there's two, one, two, four. It's, they're all over here. So let's, I'm going to show you some of these here. These are yellows. Uh, they're actually smaller yellows. Um... There's one right there, and again, in harvesting it, I take and I pinch off the base. Boy, look at the, mo there's moisture in these things like you wouldn't believe. They, these are real fresh. Okay, I found the one here, and I see a couple more here, but I'm not going to rush over to grab it because here's another one right here. Like I said, take your time through the area, work your way through the area, pinch them off in the base when you find them. Another thing you got to be real careful of, especially these right here, is if you notice, this right here is poison ivy. Just starting to come up. It'll give you poison ivy just the same, so you want to be careful. When you are mushroom hunting, be careful about the, how you handle the mushrooms, because you put them in the bag, you carry them around, jostle them around. Mushrooms are fragile. You can lose a lot of your harvest uh, and as broken up pieces in the bottom of your bag so you just want to be gentle with them. This is a gray and this is a yellow. Now yellows and grays for that matter but yellows generally are much bigger than grays but as far as tastes go there's really no difference in, in flavor. Uh, fungus has no flavor in a sense, it, a little bit of a flavor but it takes and augments the flavors that you add to it so the spices, the different ingredients that you use when you cook them will will make the difference in the in the flavor and the taste of, of the morels. Uh, grays are a much meatier type mushroom. Uh, they can almost taste like a steak when you go to cook them. Daryl Johns with EcountryLifestyle.com. I'd like to thank you for coming out mushroom hunting with me today. Here's just a few of what we found. It's going to make a good meal tonight. Uh, I hope some of the things that I've showed you today, talked about, will help increase your uh, chances for finding mushrooms out in the field. So you have a great day from EcountryLifestyle.com. Take care.